using your trimmer equipped with a nylon line cutting head, one thing is surely a given. Eventually, you will need to replenish the cutting head with line. In this brief video, we'll explain how to replace the line on our three most popular spooled line heads, Steel Auto Cut, Steel Auto Cut Easy Spool, and the Steel Trim Cut. To remove the spool from the head, follow these steps. Always stop the engine and make sure that the cutting attachment is stopped. If the trimmer utilizes a gearbox, make sure it is cooled down before doing any maintenance or repair work to the cutting head or attachment. Shown here is the Steel Auto Cut 25-2 trimmer head. Grasp the body of the spool housing firmly with one hand. With the other hand cupped over the tapping side of the head, insert your thumb into the hole where the tab release is located and push down firmly toward the base of the spool housing. This will release the tab. Rotate the head around 180 degrees and repeat the same procedure on the second tab. The cover is now released and you can remove it and the spool. You may need to press down on the spool and rotate it slightly for it to release from the spool housing. On the trim cut, you simply unscrew the star nut on the head. Once the star nut is loose, remove the nut and the spool. Although you do not have to open up the head on the easy spool to wind it, if you wanted to clean the inside of the head, you simply loosen the cap and lift the spool out of the spool housing. Be cautious though not to lose the spring that is located in the center of the spool. Once the cap and spool have been removed on the auto cut or the trim cut, this would be a good time to wipe away or tap out any loose dirt or debris that may have collected in the head. One way to reload your trimmer head is to use a preloaded spare spool that can be purchased at your steel dealer, but eventually you will need to rewind your spool or spools. To do this, first determine what the correct diameter of line is you will need and the length of line you will need to wind your head. This information can be found on the instruction card that comes with your steel trimmer head. If you cannot find those instructions, they can easily be viewed or downloaded free of charge at SteelUSA.com. In our example here with the AutoCut 25-2, the instructions call for two pieces of .095 line that are 16 and a half feet long. To get your two lengths of line easily, measure off one length of line 33 feet long. Fold the line in half and make your cut at the halfway mark. This will give you two correct lengths of line. You are now ready to wind your spool. There are a few important features on your spool that you will need to identify. First, on the top of the spool, you will find two or more notches. These are there to hold the line in place once the spool has been wrapped. Second, you will see the spool is split and the line retaining holes. There are an identical set of retaining holes located 180 degrees around the other side of the spool. And finally, on the bottom, you will see the correct winding direction for the line. Taking one line, you will want to wind the half of the spool that is closest to the notches first. You will want to make a mental note of the position of the retaining hole you will start with. When you wind the second line, you will want to start on the opposite side of the spool. Insert the line as far into the retaining hole as you can, then wind the line around the spool firmly and evenly, not crossing over into the other half. When you have approximately five inches of unwound line, insert the line into a notch in the spool. Insert the second length of line into the opposite side of the spool in the unwound half and in the retaining hole that is 180 degrees opposite the first line you wound. Repeat the winding process to about 5 inches of unwound line and insert this line into the notch opposite the notch the previous wound line is in. Carefully place the spool into the spool housing with the notches located just to the side of the eyelets. Press down on the spool and rotate it slightly until the notches and the eyelets match up and let up on the spool. It should remain in this position. Gently pull the line out of the notches and feed them through the eyelets. Place the cover on the head, making sure that the tabs line up with the tab release holes and press down until you hear it snap into place on both sides. Pull on the line to make sure all the slack has been taken up and the spool engages. On the trim cut, you will need to feed the line through the eyelets in the spool housing, then carefully lower the spool into the housing. 
then pull firmly on both ends of line to release the lines from the notches. Then reinstall the star nut. Again, pull on the line to make sure all the slack has been taken up and the spool has engaged. The line should be the same length on both ends and never longer than the line limiter distance located on the trimmer's guard. If one line is longer than the other, or if the line is longer than the line limiter distance, trim the line back as necessary. The AutoCut Easy Spool loads in a much different way. First, make sure that the arrows on the spool housing and the spool are aligned. Then firmly insert the end of the line into the outlet hole as far as you can, approximately two inches. Repeat the same procedure on the opposite side of the head. Note the winding direction arrows on the top of the spool. Turn the spool in this direction and you will automatically wind the line onto the spool. Make sure all the parts are snug on your trimmer head and you're ready to go back to work.